I couldn't resist this one. So uh, I think it's an SG special um, from from memory, something like that. Not sure exactly what year it is. Um, it's in pretty sorry state and it didn't come with any hardware. Oh, it came with the bridge actually. You know, it's got some screw holes uh, in here that we're gonna have to fill up. Um, and it's your sort of screen printed Gibson logo model. So it's one of the, one of the cheaper ones. Of course, SG is upside down if you're a right-hander, but you know, this is a left-handed guitar. So this is gonna be interesting for me to set up because it's the first um, left-handed guitar I set up. Um, the sort of rhythm lead treble selector puck is upside down, which is kind of interesting. Um, even for a left-handed player, it's upside down. Um, while I'm still in the front, I have no idea what's going on here. It didn't come with the pick guide. It obviously had the uh, the bat wing style, which I, is my personal preference. I, I think they look brilliant. No sort of extra routes or anything nasty like that. So that's good. Uh, original Gibson SG knobs. Um, and if we turn her over, it's fair to say that's not factory, but you'll notice that in there are some very tarnished Gibson uh, pots. Hopefully those pots work, but the fact that they're as tarnished as they are suggests to me that they've probably had too much heat going into them, um, but we shall see about that. And then it's got the classic headstock break, um, Gibson trademark, uh, but it's actually super, super clean, and I think what we might even do um, before we do anything else is glue that up and then obviously when we strip it off and sand it down it will just clean this up and hopefully if we do a good enough job uh, gluing it up I mean there's no sort of missing pieces and we just need to mash those fibers down so that they uh, glue nicely so if we do a good job on that uh, we might be able to do like a translucent finish unless there's hideous wood here. Now, obviously, um, what we do have to deal with are these holes here. Something I have to say I didn't notice, that they've put notches, and not centrally, you've got some nice plier marks here, actually. Uh, but they've put notches uh, against all of the, the dotted uh, frets. I wonder if this has been played right-handed. Don't do that to your Gibson. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just uh, inject some water into uh, into here and then I'll probably inject some watery glue into there um, and then I'm gonna put some glue on there. And all of those processes uh, will combine to get some real good glue in there, like the water acts as a lubricant and will hopefully soften these fibers a bit as well. Stick some water in that. That feels good. Stick a bit of water in here. Get that all nice and wet and give it a bit of some exercise. Then syringe up some of this glue. Again, I'm just going to massage that into there. Just clean up that squeeze out, and then what I'm going to do is actually open it up a little bit, very carefully, and oops, I don't want to do that. Gotta be really careful with this edge here. Just really massage it, and that's where the water's good because it will lubricate right into the depths of those cracks. There's actually a reason I was keeping the tuners on, um, which is that they're quite useful for sort of holding the um, surgical tubing in place. Wipe all this glue back into the joint. Just wipe this slightly. Clean this all up. So that's looking good. 
got a nice glue there and hopefully if I, yep, got a nice squeeze out happening all around. Beautiful. Okay. So let's just push all that back in there, making sure we don't chip anything. We are going to put this up here. Just on that and just, we certainly don't want to crank on it, but let's get some nice leverage there. We'll clean that up so that we can see what we're dealing with. That's really nice. I've got to navigate the clamps a bit with the surgical tubing. Let's tie it off around the headstock here. Bit of glue squeeze out there, so if we just clean that up that's looking really good and a little bit of squeeze out on this side so awkwardly do this okay so that's um been drying for a few hours now and should be nice and dry so let's take these clamps off and see how we went with this that's looking really good and I'll look around the other side. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. Truss rod cover is broken. We will we'll glue that up shortly. I'll just Make sure the piece goes in my little pot there. Quick look on the back then. What I want to do is just have a look at what we've got underneath there. Let's get some 120 grit. I'm just going to work some really fine glue around there. Yeah, I reckon we'll get away with that. By the time that's um, grain filled, so, the headstock repair is good. I reckon we're going to be basically invisible on that one. quickly check the pots while we're here. I don't know that these pots are very savable. That's 500k. It's 300k, it's a very free running pot that one. Uh, so they were okay, but I think either way, 
Uh, I'm going to wind some pick up, pickups for these uh, that have four conductors, and I'll put some coil taps in. Well, be those two, wouldn't it? That's it. That's super stiff that one. Two of these knobs are actually damaged, which is a real shame. And I think realistically. I'm going to have to replace those. Now, don't worry, I wouldn't normally do this. These are absolutely jammed on. Oh man. Throw them away. Now, you wouldn't ever want to do this under normal circumstances, and we've still got to be mindful because. We don't want to dent the body more than it already is. But these things are absolutely wedged on. Alright, yeah, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to buy some more of those. That is okay, we will add it to the shopping list. this so let's just cut that it's just a ground wire so just to give you a bit of a close-up of the pots they're not in good shape at all way too much heat has been applied to these before I jump into the fun bit I just wanted to show you you know the state of the body and sort of give you some insights into why I'm just gonna do a complete strip on this one so this thing has been gigged hard you know that is an incredible amount of buckle rash but it also feels like really like it's almost got like a sort of a fabric um, consistency to it, which again makes me wonder if you know this has been resprayed and then like set on some carpet before the paint was set or something like that. It just feels very uniform for buckle rash. Um, some dings there. Hopefully we can steam stuff like that out so we get a nice uh, nice surface. There's some good marks there. A uh, couple of pretty decent dings there. Um, it's another quick close look at this one. I mean obviously you can see that bit of the crack but I suspect that when we sand this back most of that will go and will be, will be good. Um, and on the side it's, it's really really clean. <laughs> the crack repair is really clean, obviously the guitar is very far from it. Um, some paint missing there. And then on the front, um, obviously we've got this goop that's all over there that I have no idea what is, but like that's obviously from a batwing pit guard. We've got the holes from the Bigsby. I love the SG, I think it's a beautiful shape. I mean, as a guitar in its own right, they're really awesome and of course some great bands have used them. With Nitro, you've got a few options. You can sand, um, certainly. Uh, you can use like lacquer thinner or acetone as well. Um, but I think I'm going to use uh, my favourite brand of paint stripper on this one. Um, I've used heat previously and that is miserable because you get incredibly toxic fumes coming off it and it tends to catch fire as well which is not great. We'll just do the back to start with uh, to see how that goes and uh, see how it responds um, and hopefully it will get this sticker off. So I'm just using this stuff here which just happens to be the cheapest paint stripper I can get at my local hardware store. Um, I've tried loads of them and this is the one that I always come back to. So I'll just get a scraper 
and then and scrape. Annoyingly, that sticker has predictably protected the paint below it. I'm still unconvinced that this was originally black, this guitar. It's looking too good, and there's kind of like a brown hue, like it's sort of... You know, maybe it was even originally any more of a sort of a vintagey brown. I can I'll give uh, give this one more going over with some paint stripper, but that's coming off really beautifully, and I'm really happy with what the uh, what the mahogany looks like underneath what I'm very confident now, it was a non-original finish. Cool. Well, we'll leave that for another 15, 20 minutes. And we'll see how we go with it. I reckon after that, we'll be good to move on to the front 